So I'm Aiden. I'm Erin. And along with another member of our group, Scott, who's in the audience, uh, we form the Coleridge High School Riverwatch team. And for the last couple of months, have been taking monthly samplings on the Elk Creek watershed. So in the maps, you can see the watershed. So we sample way at the end of the watershed, right in the town of Newcastle, about here. And these three roads are about the course of Elk Creek. So we sample really close to where it con the confluence of the Colorado River. So there's three major tributaries, the east, west, and main, which all come from headwaters up in the flat tops, which you can see here, which are a bunch of little springs and creeks that all converge into the three main. So even walking around Newcastle, you can see the profound cultural impact of Elk Creek, from restaurants to RV parks, even the schools, you can see just how much of a fixture Elk Creek is in the town because of its beauty and recreational uses. Diversions also make the creek highly important. East Elk Creek is Newcastle's main source of municipal water and there's numerous personal wells, agricultural ditches, and pipelines throughout the course of the creek. Uh, the West Divide Water Conservancy District also diverts a large amount of water, and they provide augmentation services, which is basically moving water from one place to another to compensate for diversions like wells. Uh, they serve the area from Silt Mason to Crystal River, which includes East Elk Creek. Another example of a diversion on the creek is the Trout Unlimited and Colorado Parks and Wildlife fish channeling. So basically, there's an irrigation diverting structure that blocks the entire course of the creek, and they built a channel around it to allow fish to cross around it, which they previously could not. Uh, and so basically, this increases spawning and nursing habitat in addition to contact of fish that previously could that historically could, but after the building of this diversion structure, could not come into contact with each other. This leads to more fishable areas and fish, which stimulates the local economy of Newcastle. The main environmental concern of our area is the historical mining. Newcastle is a mining town. Uh, the Tiki mine from, uh, of uranium and vanadium flows into the watershed. Uh, there likely would be some in the watershed naturally because there's a high amount of uranium and vanadium in the Newcastle Silt and Rifle area. And there possibly would be some leakage from mine, from the mine, even though it is allegedly reclaimed, meaning they theoretically have cleaned all of it up. And this needs to be tested for in the future because there is no baseline data on Elk Creek except ours. So basically, vanadium is a semi-radioactive additive to steel. And uranium, which you're probably more familiar, is a highly radioactive uh, element used in nuclear weapons that would be very dangerous in the creek. Uh, there's also issues with coal mining. That is what Newcastle was founded on, and it was a major industry for decades. And the famous Burning Mountain Mine is in the watershed. As for misuse in the town, there are lo there's lots of graffiti seen on the bridge and around the supports that run along, eh, along with the um, creek. There's lots of trash inside in the creek and under the bridge and just everywhere around it. And some people even stay under it and abuse the surrounding environment around the creek. Uh, the effect of trash on the river. Um, trash can be adjusted by fish and that can be very harmful because it can lower fish populations and just upset all of the biodiversity seen in this habitat. Uh, trash can also poison the water supply, which if that did happen to Elk Creek, that would be very, very, very unfortunate because it is the sole supplier of water for Newcastle, and it also is incredibly close to the Colorado River, which as we've all heard, is kind of a very big deal. <laughs> uh, fish supported in our creek is the rainbow trout, the brown trout, the brook trout, and the cutthroat trout, which is non-lineage and lineage. And the only native fish found in our creek is the model sculpin. All of these are, for the most part, non-native and invasive. 
Uh, our Elk Creek supports key riparian areas, which are very important because they support local biodiversity in many habitats, okay, that you're seeing almost everywhere around the East area that we live. As for recommendations we would use to talk about our creek, we would say to begin early analysis of metal, metal data to ensure stream health and to ensure no abnormal byproducts in the water from mining and pollution. We want to make sure that diversion should be reduced to allow water to reach the Colorado for fish to balance things out and for local people. Um, Alina cleanup project and or increased law enforcement pressure under the Bridge of Town, which would just kind of affect lifestyle in general around the town. And you can use the broken window theory, which states that if you make it dirty, if it's terrible, people are probably still going to abuse that. And um, other stream monitoring teams in critical riparian areas along upper parts of the watershed to pinpoint areas of distress so that way we can prevent any danger from happening to this key creek. And we'd like to thank Nate with the Middle Colorado Watershed Council for setting up the team and leading us up this whole track, the Bureau of Land Management for uh, providing lots of information used in this presentation, and Sarah and Wild Rose Education for putting the summit together. And at this time, if anyone has any questions. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.